Welcome to Outlander Media Network. We are live today at Full Moon and Tattoo Art Festival with the band Guillotine from Nashville, Tennessee. Introduce yourselves, guys, to the show. My name's Jake. I'm guitar and vocals. Steve Stokes, bass and background vocals. Zach Dubois, drums. Drummer. I don't know much about you guys. I know that you have some vultures. Yeah, I did. Yeah, the other songs to you all is coming alive. Coming alive. We have we have an album, an EP, and two singles out. Oh, there goes a card. One more time. We have an album, we have an EP, and a couple singles out. And we're about to. We just finished up our new record, Hellbound, and we're just in the works of it at the moment. And it's our finest work yet. It's our proudest work. It took five years to get it done. When will that be released? I honestly have no idea. Right now, we're in the phase of where we're starting to shop it and we're thinking that we're going to take it, we want to work with because we value this project so much that we want to make sure it's in the proper hands. And you know, it's all influenced by H.R. Giger, Clive Barker's Hellraiser, Rammstein, Static X. It's a nice little melting pot of all those things. We want to make sure that it's with the people that appreciate those things as well and it gives it the best treatment. Oh, it's going to be easy. It's got to be great. It's got to be great on you guys. And you had one of the bands that kind of spotted me to this band. Dick J and the Killjoys. So it's actually kind of a tragic story. Uh, I had a producer named Jim Lightman who recorded Vultures and the rest of our album, Podium. And he got COVID and he passed away. And uh, me and Zach were at his memorial in Nashville. And there was just this moment where something had to do. It couldn't be JJ and the Killjoys anymore. It's too long of a name. It's not punk rock. We're trying to go metal. It's not working out. And you know, Wicked Lester became a Kiss. So I'm like, why can't JJ and the Killjoys become something else? And we have a song called Guillotine, so I'm like, screw it, why not turn the G into a blade and do this thing, drag this here, and then all of a sudden it's like, that's it. And then we staged an execution, we we're like, oh, we're done, we're, we're killing Jake G and the Killjoys by execution by guillotine. So people came to the show thinking, we're ending what the band. fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah, they're like, there's a, there's a guillotine involved, there's a lot of executions, and what the fuck's this all about, you know? You know what's going on? And then people came, and we had these banners, and said, Jake Jen, we pulled him down, and we built a guillotine, and everyone was like, oh, what a bunch of dicks. Like, I get it now. Name change. Okay. Actual execution. Showbiz. <laughs> yes. hey, you gotta sell, you gotta sell, you gotta sell. All y'all from Tennessee or y'all just all over the place? We all live in Nashville. I'm from uh, Alabama, uh, Jersey. Utah. 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 men and sheep are nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're my yeah. first from Utah on this, on this show. Who's the other one? Imagine Dragons? No. I wish. Oh, the Osmonds. It was actually a guy named Andrew W. Balls. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Look at it, it's right there. I was gonna say Andrew W. I was waiting for the K, but uh, no, like, not here. Different stories. <laughs> That's what Utah makes. It's a different story. Oh. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew W. Not him. Yeah, not him. Not him. Not him. Actually, I've actually seen one of you guys before already. This one. Zach. Zach. Yeah, he was telling me that he was with the band from Merge the other day. Good buddies, right. good buddies of mine, and they needed someone to fill in. We've got to help friends. Yes, that's it's right. Little long yeah. in the house. Me yeah. and Tony hey, you know always help each other in the music industry because you never know what's going to happen. So you're talking about the COVID thing. You know, how did it affect y'all when everything was shut down, like here in Nashville? I and mean, what y'all do during all that? I mean, honestly, for me, it was the best thing that ever happened because we weren't digging and doing this before, before COVID. You know, I had a kind of an idea, and then COVID happened, and I'm like, oh, thank God it snuffed it out because it just wasn't ready, and I'm not going to release it unless it's ready. And I took that time, and I really got into Ramstein, Hellraiser, HR Gear, Static X, all this. I really defined what is industrial metal, what's new metal. That's what I like. That's what I can sing. I found my voice, found the writing. We got the players, and it was, it was just this ball of clay that just that landed and then took forming and shaping, and then discovered we really like neon green, and now it's, it's, our, it's our whole thing. Oh, yeah. Everywhere now. Because here's the thing is that everyone does black and red, and I wanted to do something that stood out brighter. And I have a custom guitar that lights that's like UV green. We have a cabinet that lights up green. We have green paint on us. It's all about neon green. I wanted to stand out something different and bring like a a new scary industrial revolutionary almost post-apocalyptic vibe to heavy metal and industrial music. 
It might have been like Destiny that I ended up with you guys because my last show was an industrial show. Nice. And we interviewed Gary uh, Newman that day. It was home ministry. That's awesome. He's got the sticker on his car. That's what he was telling me. I got on my car. I was like, man, there is He's just... He's here in his truck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's just too many coincidences going on that that wouldn't be my last concert before I came here. And, you know, we drove all the way out to, to North Carolina for that show, which was awesome. Yeah. See, if you want to catch a cool show, ministry and all them, and disappoint. I saw yeah. ministry with Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie. It, it was rowdy. Oh, you it know who was on that tour? John Siren. Oh, really? He's for because he's with Frontline Assembly. Oh shit! That's Our right boy's on. on that tour. Oh, I love John. John is so good. He's so good. What I a love what a handsome lad. Yes. We didn't That's see that tour, but I interviewed one of the bands before that tour, and that was a uh, filter. Oh, right on. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, they were on the Cooper Zombie tour, yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen Cooper. Yeah, I think mean, the man's amazing. The man is 75 years old and still performing at his high level. He's uh, he, he is, has the most longevity for doing aggressive music. There's a point where even when we see Corey Taylor, his voice is starting to wear, and I think about that with my voice. So seeing Alice still do what he does, probably sound better than he does on the records, but the band that he has, it's like, wow, this is... Like, this is peak Alice Cooper at it, like, right here, now, in his 70s. And golfing. <laughs> well, like, yes. like I say, it's just amazing when you just watch him. It's just amazing when you do it. Because, I mean, when I'm 75, I'll walk in and be in the shit all over myself. So. <laughs> I'll be in the nursing home. I'm already, I'm already doing that. I hope you guys go play out there, you know, maybe visit me. <laughs> not everyone can be Prince, not everyone can be Alice Cooper, so it's all the same, it's all the same thing. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, I've been here at a con, and he's... He's just as friendly in person as he is yeah. in Wayne's world. Like, that's him. He's like a total like like grandpa that has the most like useless information ever, but you just love listening to him talk. He's so sweet, and you realize you're Alice fucking Cooper. Like Millie Walker. Millie a gone for a good land. <laughs> All y'all think about this working this festival for the first time in full moon tattoo bar because I feel at home. It's, it's our people. Period. That's why we wanted to come here because we knew we're all those kids that were at the back of the bus talking about this horror movie that we just saw, listening to Marilyn Manson. We're all here for that same thing, and we wanted to engage. And also, there's no other bands here. Yep. Uh, like I said, I suggested that they should have had the speakers and those sound here played in here. I wish y'all could have done that. That's awesome. We thing. want to. Yeah. That's, we were breaking into the world of playing with cons, showing up to things like this. Selling T-shirts, engaging with the fans. That's the biggest thing we love meeting the people and making yeah. new friends. We made more friends today than we have ever. At any yeah, other thing. That, that's no exaggeration. Yeah, everyone's been so sweet, fine, caring, and also the vendors, also with you guys. Yes. So what happened? We were, we're neighbors, and neighbors. we're just—it's been wonderful. You guys have shown us so much insight, and vice versa, meeting other people and giving each other deals. It's been—it's wonderful. Oh, I enjoyed it. Like this. Actually, this is our first it festival at the table, also, so yeah. it's new to us. I mean, we've been to festivals, but we've never had a table. So it was our oh and that's just serendipity right there. Right? This has got to be some kind of destiny thing. I'm trying to figure a way to go to y'all's show on April 16th. Is it April 16th? Oh, April 15th. 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 And that's going to be at the Cobra in Nashville. And y'all are headlining? Opening. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. No, no, we're, we're, well, we're opening for Dead Eyes and Vampires Everywhere, which we met the bass player for Vampires Everywhere on tour when we toured with Cyclone 9. Right. Yeah, and became <coughs> Borders and Paul's. <laughs> Paul! And we bonded over Kiss. We were yeah. all the other bands. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I noticed y'all opened for Kiss, right? How the hell did y'all get that? Well, it was two years ago, yes. <coughs> it all started with him. The air in here is killing me. So, um, what happened was, so my dad's the, the bass player for Bon Jovi. Let's start there. <laughs> Big step. Um, he, uh, the bass player. Hugh McDonald. He was here earlier. Yeah, Hugh was here. Why didn't you introduce me to him? You guys were talking, you guys were gone, and he was like here, and then he got, was like so over it because he's like Larry David. And this is so not his scene. He was in and out. He was like totally yeah, like, All right, like, people dork. gone. He, he was like, I have to stand in a line for an honor. No, no. No, screw that. He's out. He's just Larry David, so it, that's, I, like you, I like you too much, that's why. So, so we, we know um, Doc McGee really well. 
and just through the Bon Jovi kiss relationship, we've all traded tickets, passes back and forth, all would know each other really well. And Doc's seen me grow up, so I've done several projects where even when I first moved to Nashville, I was doing like pop rock, which is shocking. I look like this now. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm, a good, I'm a good Mormon boy under this. So uh, I tried that first, and I'm just like, you know, I can write these songs, but I don't feel fulfilled. So when I moved to Nashville, um, I opened for Bon Jovi, and Desmond Child was in the audience, and he's like, I want to mentor you, and then we started working together. And he's like, he he just he's the kind of guy that like instead of most people that just pick the onion layer by layer, he just grabs it with both hands and rips it right to the core. And he's like, you want to do metal, don't you? And I'm like, that sounds like a fatality. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty much like a fatality, dude. He that was like a Mortal Kombat fatality. And I was just this <laughs> innocent. Like, I, I looked, a, I, I didn't have this many tattoos and looked and look this way before I met him. And then he basically put me on this path and I've never been happier than being here. And then just throughout this growth of doing metal, I've done the Kiss Cruise four times now. And I'm hoping they do another one. They're talking about doing one where... It's like even though Kiss is no longer, they're talking about doing it where like each guy does their own like solo band, and then still do Kiss as a community. But yeah, we've done the Kiss Cruise. Also, like the Darkness was on there on one year. We opened for Dokken, do the Ford, L.A. Guns, L.A. Guns. Those were the guys, man. They were the well, they were guys. So well, you know, you oh, it smoked. And, and this is one of the reasons I always like talking with my newer bands was 1985 was the year when my very first concert way back in 1985 and rap was headlining that show nice and there was an unknown band from jersey opening for the opening and that unknown band was bon jovi the owner 7800 degrees fahrenheit tour. yep and if you don't know who's going to be the next big thing that's why i love you know making new bands and promote 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 because you don't know who you're sitting next to. Thank you. And that's it. Like I said, y'all got a lot of good, a lot of preparation. I think y'all going to get it down the road. Thank you. It Thank just you. takes time. And if y'all want to work the time, you will make it. Well, a big part of it is the friendship. That's 90% of it. We're all friends. We all make each other laugh. We oh, all help each other out. And <laughs> we're passionate about this. That's the biggest thing. And whatever excites you, you should take it to the absolute fullest potential that you can. And just exhaust yourself every option and we have so much in store for this and we just want to keep doing this we want to quit our day jobs but oh, yeah I get that That's, yes like please said, was, like I said there were two shows for us back together the other one was in 87 and I went to see Motley Crue on the Girls 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 Tour oh god a known man was up in front of them from California and it was a little band called Guns and Roses and yeah. it just came up with a song oh yeah no big deal <laughs> Nobody even heard of it. it Biggest like, debut album of all time, no big deal. No big deal. It had just hit the, it had just hit, that was back when they sold cassettes. You know, and they had just hit the market, and it was like, oh my God, who are these guys? Wow, this is dirty. Like, who are these guys? <laughs> these guys are like, the homeless guys up here playing, have a big time in it. Like, why does that homeless man have a top hat? <laughs> Explain yourself. Is that what you cook chili? It's like, it's like a car there. is way more important, so you don't need a top hat. Why, why, why does the homeless person have a leather custom top hat? <laughs> I'm so sorry. So silly. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Appreciate you. We'll catch you on the road soon. Yes, absolutely. We will see you at the show. I've already seen the driver, but I need to see the other rest of you. We well, got to see the full guillotine. I was going to say, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I can't wait. And we follow guillotine on all social platforms. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's TikTok, Pornhub, X, OnlyFans, Scruff, Grinder, Farmers Only. And like I said, it'll be at the 16th. April 15th. April 15th. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. The, the numbers look the same, that's why. Uh, no, it's yeah. just yeah. the unfinished yeah. six. Yeah. 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 It's the almost there. With the at Cobra, with Vampires Everywhere. Vampires Everywhere, Dead Eyes, and Apparitions. Be there. And we're going to wish y'all a good day and have a good night. Peace out.